Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. The Gospel lesson opens with the divine words of Jesus recorded by the evangelist St. Luke. Then he spoke to them a parable that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. And the Apostle Paul writes in his first letter to the Thessalonians the following, Pray without ceasing. Pray always, pray without ceasing, and do not lose heart, as we await for the second appearing of Jesus, the Son of Man, who will return at the end of time. Now after many hours, days, months, and years spent in prayer, I still consider the blessing and privilege of prayer to be a great mystery. Our Lord Jesus Christ instructs us to pray always. And so, Christians, pray. We speak to God with our words and thoughts, in the silence of our own homes, in a room or in a corner that we have devoted to prayer, or while we are in a vehicle traveling or a tractor, at our place of work, out on the farm field, or even in church. In no uncertain terms, Jesus has told us what we should do. Pray always, and ponder in your heart all the blessings you are praying for. For Jesus would have you ask and receive what his goodness is longing to give to you. Jesus never refuses his blessings to those who pray. And therefore, we ought to gladly receive this teaching and instruction of Jesus. Consider a prayer, a blessing, a privilege, an honor, as we send up all our prayers, petitions, and requests to his throne of grace. And yet the one eternal God does not always hear us as soon as we could wish for, nor, for that matter, when it seems best for us. At times God delays our requests in order to strengthen our faith in Him, exercise our patience and love, and sometimes he grants in his anger what in his mercy he would refuse. I have always found the answer in the explanation to the small catechism to be helpful when it asks, how does God answer prayer? God answers our prayers in his time and in his way which is why our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us to pray always and not lose heart. Pray faithfully, persistently, and continually so that we do not lose heart in this life. Now let us consider the parable of the tenacious widow that Jesus taught about in the Gospel lesson. <clears throat> Jesus compares our prayers to the tenacious widow who comes to the unjust judge who neither fears God nor fears man. And yet because this woman is so persistent or tenacious in her request for justice, she keeps bothering the unjust judge. And the judge simply grants her request because the judge does not want to be beaten down by her continual coming to him. She's like a stone in his shoe, and so he just simply wants to get rid of her. The scene that the widow makes before the unjust judge is not only an embarrassment to him, but also to the tenacious widow, who has found a way to somehow appear continually before the unjust judge. In one way, we can say that the unjust judge cares about the situation 
and his reputation, albeit it is for his own selfish motives. But the point of comparison between the unjust judge and our one eternal God <clears throat> is not their injustice. Rather, it is their reputation. It is clear that our eternal God is not an unjust judge. However, if the unjust judge grants justice to the tenacious widow, how much more will our just, holy, and righteous God and Father in heaven give justice to you, who are his elect in his eternal Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, more, much, much more than the unjust judge? The Lord is true to himself. He is true to his word and promises. And the time for justice for his elect in Jesus Christ will come soon enough. Although it seems slow in coming, to use the words of the apostle Peter. Remember that God is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, as we confessed him to be last week on Thanksgiving Sunday. If we consider that the unjust judge gave the tenacious woman justice, then it stands to reason that our just, holy, and righteous God will give justice to his chosen elect in Christ, who call to him day and night. Those who pray always, pray without ceasing and not losing heart. Those who cry to God day and night. Does that describe your faithful, persistent, tenacious, and continual prayer life? Or is your prayer life something else? Is it only when you sit down to eat a meal? Maybe it's only once a day, once a week, once a month? Or maybe it's whenever we get around to telling God the things he has to get done for me to satisfy my own desires and wants. Is there room in your prayer life for thanksgiving and praise? for the things that God has already blessed you with? I have to admit that in my own prayer life, my prayers for thanksgiving and praise often seem forced rather than spontaneous. Prayer that is spontaneous or natural are the petitions that reflect my desires, my passions, my wants, the things I want God to do for me. And if any kind of suffering should befall any Christian or a loved one, that would certainly drive a Christian to their knees in prayer spontaneously. But not so much when life is good. We're not driven to prayer when things are going well when all our needs are being met, when we feel as if we don't need to be in communion with the one eternal God. And so this is why Jesus asks, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? At the close of the age, at the end of time, our Lord Jesus Christ will return to judge both the living and the dead, as we confess it in the Creed. Jesus will deliver his elect, who by faith were eager and ready to wait for his return in glory with patience, preparing themselves with prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And this day will come upon us suddenly and unexpected, like a thief in the night, to use the words of the Apostle Paul. And therefore, Jesus gives us a reason why we should pray always and not lose heart 
and have faith in him. Because Jesus has delayed his second advent in glory at the end of time, some have been tempted to fall away from the faith in Jesus Christ and believe the lies of the evil one who would suggest that Jesus has delayed his return for so long that he's not even going to come back at all. Then there's the great warning from the pen of the Apostle Paul and the pastoral epistle, the appointed epistle lesson for today. This becomes a reality for us. St. Paul says, For the time is coming when people, Christians, will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Ooh, what a fierce warning from the Apostle Paul. The reason why our Lord Jesus Christ does not hear the prayers of many is simply due to the fact that they have fallen away from the faith, from sound teaching and practice, believing myths and lies. They do not continually come to Jesus in prayer day and night. And for that matter, they don't anticipate his second advent in glory at the end of time with patience and endurance. May we never come to these temptations, desires, and errors, and fall away from the faith in Jesus, not anticipating his return. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. For whatever reason, I find that within our Lutheran tradition, we lack a consistent, continual prayer life. And I have to include everyone in that statement, everyone in our community, including myself, and especially our own church body. At the same time, I have to say, I have seen some improvements over the years. And for this, we can give God all glory, thanks, and praise. But would that all of us carve out a time in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening for prayer, beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to hear and answer us in his time and in his way. I remain convinced that we would see unbelievable changes in the hearts and lives of people in this community if we would just simply do what Jesus said. Pray always and do not lose heart. I have said it once, but I'll say it again and again. Prayer is indeed a mystery. And it's not something that you necessarily teach someone in a lecture or a class. Rather, prayer is learned by its practice. In other words, you learn how to pray by praying. When we are driven to prayer, we are blessed with the just and righteous God who not only desires to hear our prayers, but also grants justice for us, his people. Our God and Father will grant you, his elect in Jesus Christ, justice, not because we are faithful, persistent, and continual in our prayers and cries, but rather because God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love for you. Yes, the Lord desires that you pray to him continually, 
faithfully and persistently, but he answers your prayers because he is gracious and compassionate toward you. Unlike the unjust judge, our God and Father in heaven is loving and just, and he loves us, his children. The Apostle John put it this way in his epistle. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason we call upon God as our Father in heaven in prayer is because God our Father has loved us with an everlasting love in His eternal Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so as His children, we have been born again, born from above, through the washing of water with the word and holy baptism, and therefore we can boldly come to our Father in heaven who answers all our prayers. The endearing title, Father, teaches us not only about God's great love for us, but also his desire for us to come to him just as children in this life go to their dear Father and ask them, or things that they need. And of course, earthly fathers who love their children will respond to their requests in kind. But how much more will your Father in heaven respond to you who ask him in prayer? Through Jesus' death on the cross, we have been delivered from the wrath of God. We've been cleansed from all our sin and rebellion through the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. Jesus took up in his own body on the tree all our slothful weaknesses and excuses we have made to come to our Father in prayer. For all those times we have listened to the lies of the devil, not sound teaching, for all the times we have been consumed by the ways of the world, to have our itching ears satisfied by our sinful passions of the flesh, Jesus has come into this world to suffer and die on the cross to forgive them all. Jesus has brought us eternal peace and eternal life. Through his death and resurrection, we are the children of God. Baptized into his name most holy, we have the honor, privilege, and access to God in prayer. In the name of God the Father, through God the Son, Jesus, and through God the Holy Spirit, we are moved and persuaded to bring all our prayers, all our petitions, our troubles, our requests, to our just and gracious Father in heaven, who listens to our prayers and answers those prayers in His time and in His way. So, in the words of Jesus, Pray always, and do not lose heart. Unlike the unjust judge who cared nothing for the tenacious widow, our Lord and God cares for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And this is why St. Peter the Apostle wrote, Cast all your anxieties on Jesus, because he cares for you. Our Lord yearns to hear from you in prayer because you are his beloved, redeemed, baptized, communing, believing children. Pray always and do not lose heart. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.